with the joy of the Lord katika furaha ya Mungu join me in upstanding ukaungana nami katika kusimama put your hands together na ukaganisha mikono yako pamoja and let's welcome pastor David Kibera tumkaribishe mchungaji Kibera as he preach God's word anapoleta neno la Mungu glory to God tukufu kwa Mungu Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bwana sifiwe. Amen. Appreciate Pastor Francis for Tumpigie mchungaji Francis Makofi. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Tunaweza keti mbele za Bwana. I am excited to be here this uh, morning. Nimesisimuka na kufurahi kuwa hapa asubuhi leo. This morning almost becoming afternoon. Ah kabla ifikue ya dhuhuri. Uh, because the Lord is here. Kwa sababu Mungu yu hapa. What causes me to be excited? Abacho kinanifurahisha sana. Is the fact that we are commemorating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Ni kwamba tunakumbuka jinsi Yesu Kristo alifufufuka. That he died and rose again. Ni kwamba alifariki na kafufuka. And because of that, na kwa sababu ya hilo, I have hope. Ni kwamba ninatumaini. I have hope beyond this life. Ninatumaini zaidi ya uhai huu. I have hope beyond the grave. Ni kwamba ninatumaini bali kushida kaburi. This life might not be as I would have loved it to be. Labda wakati huu enda ukawa si vyenye nilitarajia. Maybe you are not where you wanted to be. Labda hauko mahali ulitarajia kuwa. But hear this. Lakini sikia hili. There is hope. Ni kwamba kuna tumaini. Because the Lord is risen. Kwa sababu Yesu amefufuka. He is no longer in the grave. Yeye hayuko kaburini tena. He is alive and well. Ni kwamba yu hai na salama. The message of Easter is the message of the cross. Na ujumbe wa Isa ni ujumbe wa msaraba. And the message of the cross is the good news. Na ujumbe wa msaraba ni habari jema. The good news because Jesus came and died on that cross. Habari jema kwa sababu Yesu alikuja na kafariki pale msarabani. And he rose again na kwamba akafufuka tena conquered death na and the grave akashida mauti na kifo he overcame sin ni kwamba akashida dhambi and today na leo hii we can live a people who are freed of sin na tunaweza ishi watu ambao wamekombolewa na dhambi we can walk in this life with the confidence knowing that even though Tunaweza tabia katika maisha kwa ujasiri tukijua igawa this life does not amount to what would have wanted kaba hii maisha haiko vile ningetarajia or we are not yet there ama tatujafika mahali pale or we are afflicted ama tumesononeka sana or we have an issue that we have struggled with ama kuna kitu ambacho tunangangana nacho or the doctors have said we have this illness that they, they say it's chronic ama wengine wanasema tuko na maradhi haya ambao ni ya kudumu and scripture say though this body wastes away maandiko inasema igawa hii miri itaondoka but from the inside i'm getting built day each day lakini kwa mwili wa ndani kwamba unajengeka kila siku all that is possible because christ resurrected. Ni kwamba yote yawezekana kwa sababu Yesu alifufuka. So that I may know him. Ili niweze kumfahamu. And know the power of his resurrection. Na nijue nguvu za ufufuo wake. We want to look at the life of Jesus. Tunataka kuangazia maisha ya Kristo. Because we are talking about a resurrected Christ. Ndio tunanena kuhusu Yesu aliyefufuliwa. It is true for some of us this can be a story. Huenda ikakuwa kwa wengine wetu itakuwa ni kama story. That we have heard over and over again. Na labda tumesikia mara kwa mara tena. And this morning or this afternoon we have an opportunity to hear the story one more time. Lakini adhuhuri hii tuna fursa ya kusikia hii story tena. But I want to submit to us that this story is true. Lakini nataka kuambia kwamba hadithi hii ni ya kweli. It is recorded in history. Ni kwamba imenakilika katika historia. That it happened. Kwamba ilitendeka. That Jesus came. Kwamba Yesu alikuja. He was born. Ni kwamba akazaliwa. He grew like you and me. Na akakuwa kama wewe na mimi. Scripture says that he grew in wisdom. Bia maandiko inasema kwamba alikuwa katika kufahamu. He grew in stature. Na kwa katika kimwili. He had he had had a favor with men and with god na akapata kibali kwa wanadamu na mungu it is true and it is a fact ni kwamba iliwezekana na ni kweli we are also saying that it is true that he died and rose again na tunasema ni kweli kwamba alikufa na akafufuka so just in case you are here and you thought this was just another story kwa hivyo igawa ulikuwa hapa na unasikia fikiria hii ni hadithi nyingine we need to look at what happened to jesus tunafaa kuangalia nini limtendekea yesu that part venture you might be moved to believe that this is it uenda labda utapata msukumo kuamini kwa We will also see what the, the, the cross has availed for us. Na pia tutaona msalaba umetutwalia nini? In the second service. Katika ibada ya pili, we 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 were we were told what the cross of Jesus has given us. Tuliambiwa ni nini msalaba wa Yesu ulituletea? 
and among many other things na baadhi ya vitu vingi the cross has given us protection ni kwamba msalaba umetupa ulinzi the cross has given us redemption ni kwamba msalaba ulitupa ukobozi and you know it is possible that you are walking in this life and you are so afraid of things that you you know and you don't know unajua unaweza kuwa katika hii maisha na unaogopa vitu mingi zingine unajua na hujui and some of us are afraid that We have come to this place and we yet have not figured out what we want to do with our lives. Na wengine labda tumekuja mahali hapa na hatujatambua ni nini tutafanya na maisha yetu. Or you could be here and you're a young man and you're wondering when is it going to happen for me? Na labda uko hapa kijana unanashangaa itanitendekea lini? Or you are a young lady. Ama wewe ni kijana mstari. You are afraid that the ears have moved and nobody is talking to you. Na unaogopa kwamba miaka inaondoka na hakuna mtu anakusemezea. Of course when we say talking to you we mean like yeah not not like talking to you like like yeah. Do you, know, you know what we are saying Unajua, and it is scary for a young lady na inaogofia kwa mwanadada i don't know i haven't been one sijui na sababu sijai kuwa mmoja but i know lakini na vinyenye najua it is not good news kwamba si habari nzuri that a young lady who is well groomed and they are working and they have everything that you know men would want nobody talks to you like yeah lady can we sit and have a cup of tea nobody talks to you it is scary si vizuri na hofu ya wakati mwanadada amesoma na na kitu na hakuna mwanaume anamuongeresha tupata chai ya manini inaogofia but i'm here to tell you this lakini ko hapa kukuambia hili and the good news ni kwamba habari jema is that The Lord has you. Ni kwamba Yesu yu nami. The Lord is taking care of you. Ni kwamba Yesu anakushughulikia. He's taking care of those fears and worries that you may be having. Ni kwamba anashughulikia mafadhaiko na ugoga wote. You could be here and you're a parent. Labda uko hapa na wewe ni mzazi. And you are worried and disturbed about your children. Na labda una unastaajabu sana kuhusu watoto wako. They have never they, they didn't amount to anything as kwa, far as you're concerned. Kwa sababu hakufanyika chochote kulingana na mawazo yako. They have become everything else kwa. but the kind of children you wanted. Na wamefanyika vitu vingine zozote lakini sio kile ambacho ulitaka so that you are stressed and depressed. Kwa hivyo uko na mawazo mengi na shida za mawazo because they are drunk and lost in substance abuse. Kwa sababu wamepotelea katika madawa na ulevi. I'm here to tell you that there is some good news. Niko hapa kukuambia kuna habari chema. There is one who came and died on the cross. Na mmoja alikuja na kafa msalabani. Like we have said he said it is finished. Na tunasema kwamba alisema kwamba imeisha. And among those things that were finished are the things that you are afraid of and the things that cost you sleepless nights. Na baadhi ya zile vitu zilikamilika ni zenye unaogopa na zinakufanya kupotoa na usingizi. I look at the life of Jesus. Naangalia maisha ya Yesu and scriptures in the book of Luke chapter number 2. Na maandiko katika Luka aya ya pili. And this is a scripture that we all know from well maybe not scriptures uh, that we were taught when we were in Sunday school in case you had an opportunity to go to Sunday school. Ni maandiko tulifunzwa iwapo ulipata fursa kwenda Sunday school. In the book of Luke chapter number 2 verse number 52 if you're going to give us kama Luka mtakatifu 252. This is what it says. Hivi ndivyo Biblia inasema. And Jesus increased in wisdom. Na kwamba Yesu akaongezeka katika hekima and stature na katika hali ya mwili in favor with God and men. Kwa kibali cha Mungu na wanadamu. We are saying that the famous Jesus so who this Jesus who was born and people were excited and even the magi went to see him and everybody was excited that Jesus has come into this world Tunasema kuhusu huyu Yesu ambaye alizaliwa watu wakakuwa na furaha msisimko na wengi wakaenda kumuona kwamba huyu Yesu amekuja ulimwenguni A few years later miaka midie kichache tu baadaye The same people who were excited about him Wale watu ambao walipatwa na msisimko kuhusu yeye A few chapters in the book of Luke katika chapter kadhaa katika kitabu cha Haruka They turn against this famous child who has come into life Wakamgeukia huyu mtoto ambaye alikuja katika ulimwengu And they as a unit unanimously decide let him be crucified Wakauliza watu na watu wakakubaliana kwa umoja kwamba kwamba asurubiwe And in the presence of Jesus they said give us a thief na wakasema kwa niamba ya Yesu tupe yule mwizi. We are better off with a thief than with Jesus. Afadhali tukue na mwizi kuliko huyu Yesu. And the book of Luke chapter number 23. Na katika kitabu cha Luka 23. Records what happened to Jesus. Tunaona ni nini kilimtendekea Yesu. I pray that we get there Luke chapter number 2 verse uh, uh, chapter number 23 verse number 1 says then the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. Na ma, ma, umati wote ukainuka na ukampelekea kwa Pilato. But just to contextualize this 
ili kukuweka katika muktadha Jesus has come into life and he has come of age he has started his ministry and now he's getting to the end of his ministry yes, so he's, he's, he's 33 years or thereabouts Yesu akakuja katika ulimwengu na akakuwa katika hali ya ujana ameingia katika huduma na saa hizi ni wa miaka 30 because he's about to go and be crucified the kwa, next few days coming kwa sababu yuko karibu kwenda kusiribiwa siku kidogo tu so verse number 2 says and they began to accuse him saying we found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar saying that he himself is Christ na wakaanza kusema na kumstaki kwamba tulimpata huyu jamaa ni kwamba akiwapotoza inchi na akiwaambia watu wasilipe ushuru kwa kaisari wakisema akisema yeye ni Yesu mfalme verse number three. mstari wa tatu. then Pilate asked him saying are you the king of the Jews he answered and he answered him and said it is as you say na pirato akamuuliza akisema je wewe ni mfalme wa yahudi ye akajibu akasema wewe umeshasema verse number 4 mstari wa 4 so pilate said to the chief priests and the crowd i find no fault in this man kwa hivyo pirato akasema kwa makuhani wakuu na kwa umati mimi sijapata mawa kwa huu mtu verse number 5 mstari wa 5 but they were the more fear saying he stirs up the people teaching throughout all Judea beginning from Galilee to this place nao wakasema kwa kwa guvu zaidi kwa kisema kwamba yeye anawachangamsha watu na wakuwafunza kutokagia pale Judea mpaka Galilee uh, katika hizo sehemu zote verse number 6 mstari wa sita. when Pilate heard of Galilee he asked if the man were a Galilean Uh, wakati pirato alisikia galidaya akauliza huyu mtu ni mgalili verse number 7 says as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction he sent him to Herod who was also in Jerusalem at that time na pude tu aliposikia kwa baye anatoka katika sehemu za Herodi alimtuma pale kwa Herodi pale Jerusalemu wakati huo verse number 8 mstari wa 8 now when herod saw jesus he was exceedingly glad for he had desired for a long time to see him because he had heard many things about him and he hoped to see some miracle done by him na ikakuwa herod wakati alimwona yesu akafurahi sana maana kwa muda mrefu alitamani kumuona kwa sababu alisikia maneno mengi kumuhusu na alitarajia sana kuona miujiza ikitendeka kwake if you just hold it there shikiria hapo that is the story of jesus hiyo ni hadithi ya yesu they are looking for a reason to put him in they are looking for a reason to accuse him wanataka tu sababu ya, ya kumshtaki of wrong doing so that they can execute him kumshtaki kwa mambo mabaya ili waweze kumwangamiza this man called herod huyu mtu kwa jina herod scripture says that he longed to see jesus maandiko yanasema alitamani sana kumuona yesu because he had heard many things about him kwa sababu alisikia mengi sana kuhusu yesu what jesus had done mambo ambayo yesu alikuwa ametenda and the miracles he had performed na miujiza ambayo alikuwa ameitenda among some of the miracles that jesus performed was ba- the feeding of the 5000 baadhi ya miujiza aliyotenda ni kuwapatia chakula watu 1500 Jesus also raised the dead na Yesu pia aliwafufua aliyokuwa amekufa I remember he had a friend called Lazarus nakumbuka alikuwa na rafiki kwa jina Lazarus who had died and he was in the grave for four days alikuwa amefariki siku ya kaburini and when Jesus comes into the scene he calls him out na wakati Yesu alikuja pale akamwaita and Lazarus walked out na Lazaro akatembea This among many other things are what Jesus did. Ini baadhi ya mambo ambayo Yesu alitenda. And this struggle Herod and Pilate struggle to look for a reason to put Jesus in. Na Pilato na Herod wanangangana kutafuta sababu ya kumweka Yesu ndani. Because dali. everything that Jesus did was good. Kwa sababu kila kitu Yesu alitenda kilikuwa kizuri. He served the people. Ni kwamba alitumikia watu. He met their needs. Na kwamba akakutana na mahitaji yao. He healed the sick. Akawaponya wagonjwa. He provided to them. Na akawapatia vitu walizohitaji. He Akawapatia utumaini kwa sababu hawako na tumaini. Then we get fast forward to verse number 18. Twende mpaka mstari wa 18. Verse number 18 says and they all cried out at once saying away with this man and release to us Barabbas. Na kwa pamoja wote wakalia wakasema peleke mbali huyu mtu utuachilie Barabbas. Even at this time Pilate is still struggling and this is what scripture says who had been thrown into prison 
for a certain rebellion made in the city and for murder. This is the man that they say that Madiko inasema huu ni mtu ambaye alikuwa amewekwa katika gerezani kwa sababu ya kukataa uh, na alikuwa amewekwa kwa sababu ya mauaji. See verse number 20. Says, Pilate therefore wishing to release Jesus because he had seen there was nothing that he was going to accuse Jesus about. Kwa hivyo Pilato akawazia kumwachilia Yesu kwa sababu alitizama na akaona hakuna kibaya Yesu alikuwa ametenda. So therefore wishing to release Jesus again called out to them. Akitaka kumwachilia Yesu akawaita tena akawauliza tena. Verse number 21 says but they shouted saying crucify him crucify him. Lakini wakapasha sauti wakasema wasurubishwe na asurubiwe. Verse number 22 says then he said to them the third time Akas- why What evil has he done? I have found no reason for death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. Na lakini akasema kwa mara ya tatu, kwa nini? Ni nini baya iko katika huu mtu? Sijaona chochote cha kumweka katika mauti. Friends, brothers and sisters. Dugu na dada na marafiki. The story of Jesus and what he went through is real. Ni kwamba hadithi ya Yesu na alichokipitia ni ya kweli. And when Jesus comes into the scene he is coming to fulfill scripture that had been spoken long before he was born. Na wakati Yesu anakuja anakuja kudhibitisha maandiko ambayo yalikuwa kitambo kabla hajazaliwa. And he comes into the scene na anapoingia and becomes the lamb of sacrifice. Anakuja na anafanyika mwanakadoo wa kufanywa dhabihu. He becomes the Passover lamb so to speak. Anakuja na anafanyika mwanakadoo wa Passover. This would take us back to the book of Exodus chapter number 12. Hii inatupelekea tunarudi pale katika kitabu cha kutoka 12. Exodus chapter number 12. Katika kitabu cha kutoka 12. Give us verse number 43. Kuanzia mstari wa 43. And the Lord said to Moses and to Aaron this is the ordinance of the Passover no foreigner shall eat it Na ye Mungu akamnenea Musa na Aaroni akawaambia hiyo maagizo ya Pasaka kwamba hakuna mgeni yeyote atashiriki But every man's servant who is bought for money when you have circumcised him then he may eat it lakini iwapo kwa mmoja mtumwa mmoja ambaye amenunuliwa kwa pesa na mmemtairisha kwamba yeye anaweza shiriki number 45 45 a sojourner and a hired servant shall not eat it mpitajia na mtumishi ambaye amekodishwa hata shiriki verse number 46 46 in one house it shall be eaten You shall not carry any other flesh outside the house and mark this no shall you break one of its bones. Madiko inasema ndani mwa nyumba itashiriki watu mtashiriki kwaaba msibebe nyama yoyote nje ya nyumba na kwamba mzifuje mfupa wowote. Those were the instructions that were given to the children of Israel. Hao ni maagizo ambao wana Waisraeli walipewa. When they were going to partake of the Passover lamb. Wakati walikuwa naenda kushiriki mwanakodoo wa Pasaka. God tells them that this is what you are going to do so that you can be protected from the agent of death that God God was going to send. Mungu anawaambia mtafanya haya na ili mkaweze kulindwa kutokana na maraika wa maafa. I want you to mark that God had clear instructions to the children of Israel that no bone was to be broken of the Passover lamb. Nataka uhudue kwamba kwamba Mungu aliwapa mashauri kamili akawaambia kwamba huyo mwanakodoo azivujwe mfupa wowote. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 21 uh, verse number 23 Kubukubu la Torati 21:23 Deuteronomy 21:23 Kubukubu la Torati 21:23 This now happens after 40 years the children of Israel have crossed over they have come to this place and God is reminding them of what he had said when he was delivering the children of Israel from Egypt Inafanyika miaka 40 after baada ya wana wa Israeli wametolewa pale utumwa na Mungu anawakumbusha ni nini alikuwa amewaabia kabla wa The people who are there the people who came from Egypt none of them at this point 
is alive apart from two guys. Nataka uone kwamba watu ambao walitoka Misri kwa wakati huu hakuna hata mmoja aliye hai. So God takes time to remind them again of what he had said. Kwa hivyo Mungu anachukua wakati na anawakumbusha mara tena abacho alikuwa amekisema. This is what scripture says. Maandiko inasema hivi. His body shall not remain overnight on the tree. But you shall surely bury him that day so that you do not defile the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance for he who is hanged is a cast of God Maandiko inasema kwamba mwili wake usikae pale juu ya mti usikukuta lakini mtamzika siku hiyo nyingine ili msifanye na jinsi sehemu hii ambayo Mungu anawatoaria kama urithi maana imeandikwa kwamba araniwe aliyotudikwa mtini so one of the things that happened at the cross of calvary kwa sababu kitu kimoja ambacho kilifanyika pale katika calvary and that is for you and me to take home and run with na hilo ni lako wewe na mimi kwenda nalo is that scripture was fulfilled ni kwamba maandiko yalitimilika what was prophesied many years ago abacho kilitolewa unaambi miaka mingi iliyopita what was prophesied generations ago ama abacho kilitajwa vizazi vingi zilizopita at the time we see jesus being crucified wakati tunapomuona yesu akisulubiwa those scriptures are fulfilled maandiko hayo yanatimilika and so if i had any doubt kwa hivyo kama ningelikuwa na shaka if i thought this was just another story na kama ningefikiria hii ni hadithi nyingine tu ya kawaida there is enough proof for us ni kwamba kuna hakikisho lile kwetu people who didn't know what was going to happen many years ago prophesied watu ambao hawakujua itatadeka nini miaka mingi iliyopita wakatoa unabii that jesus would die on the cross kwamba yesu atakufa msalabani in actual fact they are told this is the way you are going to do the passover feast na kwamba wanaambia kwa jia nyingine kwamba hii pasaka mtaifanya kwa jia hii and jesus comes many years after na yesu anakuja baadaye miaka mingi and word for word accomplishes fulfills that na scripture kwa ba neno kwa neno linatimilika kama maandiko yalivyo in the book of john chapter number 19 katika kitabu cha yohana 19 this is what is recorded of jesus hivi divi ilivyo nakilika kuhusu yesu and john records this na yohana amenakiri haya chapter 19 verse number 32 ah uh, Mlango wa 19 aya ya 32 Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. Ni kwamba nao maaskari wakaingia na wakavuja miguu ya mtu wa kwanza na mwingine ambaye walisurubiwa pamoja. At this point John is talking about Jesus and the thieves that were crucified together with Jesus on the cross. Hapa Yohana ananena kuhusu Yesu na wezi wa vili waliosurubiwa pamoja. The Roman soldiers come to check on whether these guys are dead. Na maaskari wa warumi wakakuja kuangalia kama watu bado yuko hai ama wamekufa they were crucified and they were being hung on the tree because they were criminals kwa sababu walisurubishwa kwa msalaba juu walikuwa ni wadhalifu and jesus becomes part of those criminals na yesu akafanyika mmoja wa wale verse number 33 says but when they came to jesus and saw that he was already dead they did not break his legs na walipofika kwa yesu na wakaona kwamba amekwisha kufa hawakuvuja miguu yake verse number 34 says but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out na maandiko inasema kwamba mmoja wa maaskari akamdunga kwa upande kwa mkuki na pude maji na damu ikamtoka verse number 35 that is Nathan and he who has seen has testified and his testimony is true and he knows that he is telling the truth so that you may believe maandiko inasema na aliyeona anashuhudia na ushuhuda wake ni wa kweli ili yeye aliyeona na nawaambia ni ukweli ili muweze mkaamini for these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled not one of his bones shall be broken na kwa bahaya yalitendeka na ili maandiko yakatimilike kwamba hakuna moja ya mifupa yake ilivujika verse 37 says and again another scripture says they shall look on him whom they pierced na kwamba maandiko yengine yanasema kwamba watamwangazia watamtafuta yeye waliyemdunga this 
is a fulfillment of what was prophesied many years before the children of Israel occupied the promised land. Ni kwamba haya yanatimilika ambayo yalitabiriwa miaka mingi sana kabla wana Israeli hawajafika katika mahali ya The writer of this scripture says it was written so that you may believe. Mwadishi anasema kwamba ilinakiriwa ili wewe uweze kuamini. So if you had any doubts, kama ungekuwa na shaka, John writes to you so that you may believe. He writes to me so that I may believe. Kwa ba Yohana mtakatifu anakuandikia wewe na mimi ili tuweze kuamini. I want to submit to us in this house this afternoon. Nataka kueleteeni sisi katika juba hili. If you have any doubts about Jesus dying on the cross for you and for me. Kama unao shaka yoyote ya Yesu kufa msalabani kwa ajili yako na mimi. It is your time to believe. Ni wakati wako kuamini. You might want to ask why did God tell the children of Israel not to break any bone? What was the significance of this? Why did he do this? It's because he knew Jesus was going to come much much later. Unaweza jiuliza ni kwa nini Mungu aliambia watu wana wa Israeli kwamba huyu mwana kodoo asivujwe mifupa yote? Ni kwa sababu na alijua kwamba Yesu atakuja miaka mingi mingi baadaye. You might also want to ask what was the problem with breaking the bones? Unaweza jiuliza shida ilikuwa nini? You are eating the meat. So what 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 is the reason of not breaking the bones? That is the reason that you may believe. Unaweza jiuliza ni kwa nini tena kama tunakula hii nyama kwa nini tusivuje mifupa hiyo ilikuwa ni sababu ili ukuje kuamini And why why didn't they break the bones of Jesus Na ni kwa nini hawakuvuja mifupa ya miguu ya Yesu It is simple because he was dead by the time they came to check on him Kwa urahisi sana ni kwa sababu alikuwa amekwisha kufa wakati walimfikia In those days when you were crucified you would hang on the cross Wakati wa gesurubio msarabani and you would fight for life Ugewekwa pale msarabani na ugengangana kwa maisha yako. Where they nailed your feet? Waka mahali wamekupigilia msumari miguu. Because there was a, a, a small stump that you could lift yourself up. Kwa sababu kulikuwa na mahali ugejiinua kidogo. Trying to get breath because eh. you were exhausted and you were you, you 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 had lost a lot of strength and water. Ukijaribu kutafuta haya kwa sababu umechoka sana na damu na maji imekutoka. And you are fighting for life. Na unapigana upate uhai. You would keep doing that until the minute that life would be snapped out of you. Ugefanya namna hiyo mpaka wakati uhai utakutoka. And this is why we say Jesus was not killed by the Roman soldiers. Na ndio maana tunasema kwamba Yesu yeye hakuuliwa na askari wa Roma. He gave up his ghost. Biblia inasema kwamba yeye alitoa uhai wake. He sacrificed his life for you and me. Ni kwamba alitoa uhai wake. He was not killed by the Roman soldiers. Yeye hakuuliwa na askari wa Warumi. The two thieves were killed. Wale wezi wawili waliuliwa. When the Roman soldiers come and they find they are still fighting for their little rights wakati wale wa askari walikuja wakakuta wezi bado wanangangana kwa sababu ya uhai and their lives couldn't have saved anybody not even a child na wanaona kwamba hawageweza kujiokoa hata kuokoa mtoto they broke their legs ni kwamba waliwavuja miguu so that that movement of up and down trying to gasp for air would be no more ili wasiweze kuinuka juu wakijaribu kutafuta hewa hawataweza tena and from that moment na kuangalia wakati huo just took a few minutes and they were gone walichukua tu muda kidogo na wakaenda the scripture that we read maandiko ambayo tumeshoma was talking about the passover lamb being eaten ana nena kuhusu mwana kodoo wa pasaka kuliwa because the sabbath was the following day kwa sababu sabato ilikuwa siku inayofuatia the same happens to jesus and the thieves that were on the cross kitu kama hicho kikamfanyikia yesu na wezi waliokuwa msarabani they had to die at some particular point lazima wagefariki katika wakati fulani so that they will be removed from the cross ili waweze kuondolewa juu ya msalaba and be buried on the same day na ili wazikwe siku hiyo because if that didn't happen then they were going to defile the sabbath that was coming the following kwa sababu kama hilo halijafanyika wagefanya sabato na jisi and so they had to die kwa hivyo lazima wagekufa but jesus was not killed by the roman soldiers lakini yesu hakuuliwa na maaskari wa wao so if there is anything that uh, the cross of jesus has availed for us today is the faith to believe the word of god and to know that he actually came to the cross and gave up his life for you 
Kwa hivyo kama kuna kitu ambacho msalaba wa Yesu unatunenea ni kwamba nitumaini kwamba Yesu alikuja na kwa hakika akafa pale msalabani. One other thing that the cross of Jesus uh, or the, the crucifixion of Jesus gives to us. Kitu cha pili ambacho kusurubia kwa Yesu kunatutwalia is the forgiveness of sin. Ni msamaha wa dhambi. The book of Romans chapter number 6 verse number 23 says that the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Kwa Roma 6:23 sema nao dhawambu ya dhambi ni mauti Romans 6:23 Warumi 6:23 says for the wages of sin is death Maripo ya dhambi ni kifo wages is what you give to a worker who has done some work in the course of the day or in the course of time Ile maripo ni yale unampa mtu ambaye amefanya kazi mahali fulani So the wages of sin of dhawambu ama maripo ya dhambi because sin has to be paid for. Kwa sababu lazima dhambi italipika ama itagaramika. The sin is not anything else but death. Ni kwamba malipo ya dhambi sio kitu kingine ila tukifo. And has taken place sin is not paid for. Na kwa sababu hakuna kama kifo hakiko basi dhambi haijaripiwa. Scripture says but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lakini karama ya Mungu ni uzima wa milele katika Kristo Yesu Bwana wetu. In the scripture we just read in the book of Luke chapter number 23. Ka katika maandiko Luka 2:23 the, the people who were crucified or the thieves that were crucified together with Jesus. Kwa wale wezi ambao walisurubiwa pamoja na Yesu. If you give us verse number 32. Uh, aya ya 32. Verse number 32 of uh, Luke chapter 23 says there were also two others two others criminals led with him to be put to death 33 Bible inasema kwamba walikuwepo wawili majabazi pia walifanyika kufa pamoja And when they had come to the place called Calvary they were crucified uh, they crucified him and the criminals one on the right and the other on the left Na walipofika pale mahali panaitwa Calvary ni kwamba wakamsurubisha na wale wa hizi mmoja kwa upande wa kulia na mwingine wa kushoto 34 then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. Nekoba Yesu akasema, akasema, Bwan, Baba, wasamehe maana hawajui watedaro. Nao wakazigawanya guo zake na wakapiga kura. At that point when they are crucifying Jesus. Mahali pare wale wipokuwa kimsurubisha Yesu. At that point when they are mocking him. Wakati walikuwa wanamtubia maneno. He releases forgiveness. Nekwamba akachiria msamaha. To his persecutors. Kwa wale watu wabawa walikuwa na msurubisha. To his tormentors. Wale wabawa walikuwa na mtesa. To those that had rejected him. He forgave them. And I submit to somebody in this house this afternoon. You could be here and you have rejected Jesus all this time. Believe it or not, he has forgiven you. Like it or not, he has forgiven you. Forgiveness is available for you and me. You do not have to do anything. He has already forgiven you. Verse number 35 says, and the people stood looking on, but even the rulers with them sneered, saying, he saved others, let him save himself. He is the Christ, the chosen of God. Verse number 39, if you go to verse number 39, then one of the criminals who were hung blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. Amoja wale majabazi walikuwa wamesurubiwa na yeye akamkufuru akisema kama we ni Kristo jiokoe. But the other answering rebuked him saying, do you not even fear God seeing you are under the same condemnation? Lakini mwenzake akamjibu huku akimkemea na kumwambia Je, haumuogopi Mungu kuona kwamba hata wewe uko chini ya hukumu? He says in verse number 41 and we indeed justly and we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Kwa sababu sisi wenyewe tunapata hili kwa uhakika kwa sababu ya matendo yetu lakini huyu mtu hajafanya kitu chochote mbaya. Verse if, if you go to 
Go back to verse number 41 because there's something there that happens. Even the worst of us at some point we come to a place where we realize can you imagine this is a thief and a robber who is saying this says we are justly here for what we did but this man this man has done nothing wrong the fact that Jesus was there and he was going through what he was going through for you and me changes the perspective of a robber of a thief who was crucified because of what he had done and for the first time in his life he has something positive to say and Jesus says in the, press, in the verses that follow then he said to Jesus Lord remember me when you come into your kingdom and what, what did Jesus say Jesus says he said to him assuredly I say to you today you will be with me in paradise and salvation is that simple you only need to yield to the savior and it is a done deal recognize who he is Get to know that without a savior, you are dead meat. And you will be saved. You don't need to be baptized. You don't need to go through the new believers class. You don't need to know anybody. You only need to submit to Jesus. Acknowledge that he is alone. And so salvation is available for us. Forgiveness of sin is available for us. At the cross of Jesus. And because of that then we are justified. The father God looks at us as though we never sinned. And I want to say this, and this is, I know is a controversial statement. That your sin is forgiven. Your future sin is forgiven. Because the wages of sin is death, and death has occurred. And has taken care of your sin, past, present, and future. Because even yourself right now, when you got saved, it is because of the same death that occurred many years ago. So you could be here and you are you're not born again let me tell you your sin is forgiven you only need to walk into that forgiveness that is available you for us you don't have to do anything else you don't have to go through whatever classes salvation is available for us like the thief who was on the cross Jesus just speaks a word and it is done he says, today you will be with me in paradise. One last thing I want to say about what we have achieved and what we have received at the cross of Calvary. Is that we have the confidence of facing death and darkness. Because of the act of Jesus on the cross, we have now the confidence of facing darkness and death in our lives. And I say this, literary. Scriptures will tell us that we do not mourn when our loved ones have gone. We do not mourn like people who have no hope. 
Maandiko yanasema wakati tunapoteza wapendwa wetu atufai kuomboleza kama watu ambao hawana tumaini. This scripture can only be true to you if you have known the Lord Jesus. Maandiko haya yanaweza kuwa kweli kwako kama umejuana na Yesu. I tell you for a fact if you don't know the Lord Jesus you'll be afraid of darkness. Wacha nikuambie kwa ukweli kama hujajuana na Yesu utaogopa giza. You are afraid of darkness. Kwamba wewe utaogopa giza. You are afraid of death. Na utaogopa mauti. Because once you die you die forever. Kwa sababu ukishakufa umekufa kabisa. But if you are in the Lord you do not die you just sleep awaiting for the day of resurrection. Lakini kama uko ndani ya Mungu wewe unalala tu ukigojea siku ya kiyama. And, and and in this we see Jesus facing this point of darkness this worst moment in his life na hapa tunamuona Yesu akikubana na hii hali ya giza ngumu sana maishani in verse number 44 it says of chapter number 23 23:44 Jesus said to him assuredly I said to you uh, is that what I wanted it was about uh, this is John I think anyway When Jesus dies on the cross, wakati Yesu alikufa msalabani, there's something that happens in the temple. Kuna kitu kilifanyika pale hakaruni. Scripture says that around noon, maandiko inasema ifikapo wa dhuhuri hii, that there was a lot of darkness that came upon the face of the earth. Kakuwa na giza nyingi katika ulimwengu. And for three hours it was dark. Na kwa masaa matatu kukakuwa na giza. It was dark for three hours. Na kukakuwa na giza kwa masaa matatu. At that point the sun stopped shining. Na wakati yule jua ilikoma kuangaa. And the same time na wakati huo huo the temple uh, cross the, 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 the curtain of the temple was torn into two na kwamba kitabaa cha hekaru kikapasuka mara mbili jesus had the confidence to face the darkness that came kwamba yesu alikuwa na ujasiri wa kukubana na giza iliyokuja because he was confident of where he was going kwa sababu alikuwa na ujasiri wa mahali anapoelekea he had come from the father alikuwa ametoka kwa baba he was going to the father alikuwa anarejea kwa baba i submit to us today na waambieni if you are not going to the father kama uendi kwa baba you will not have the confidence to face even the the scariest of the moments hautakuwa na ujasiri wa kukubana na kifo ambacho kinaogofia sana live alone now death on the cross wacha tu kifo msalabani i know right now in philippi na saizi najua unaangalia there are people who are dying on the cross well literally they are not dying but they are they're being crucified in philippines kuna watu wanasurubishwa pale ufilipino and they do this a lot na wanafanya maneno hapo around this time sana. wakati kama huu but i want to tell you this lakini nataka nikuambie none of them can save a fly hakuna hata mmoja anaweza kuokoa nzi and that crucifixion that they, they have in in philippines na ule usurubisho ambao wanaopata pale ufilipino just for a few minutes and then they get out of the cross ni dakika tu kidogo alafu wanaondoka msalabani jesus never came down from the cross yes up his life hakutoka there at the cross hakutoka pale msalabani alitudikwa pale akasurubiwa in the jewish uh, customs katika tamaduni za wayahudi when the jewish woman was going to take the kids to bed wakati mama muyahudi anampeleka mtoto karale they would pray a prayer like this wageomba obi kama hili and we get that quote in uh, some chapter number 31 verse number 5 na pia nimenakilika pale katika zaburi 1:35 these are the words that jesus quotes at this time aya dio maneno ambayo yesu when he has come to the end of his life alianuku pale wakati alikuwa into your hand i commit my spirit you have redeemed me o lord god of truth kwa sababu katika mikono yako najitoa roho yangu kwa sababu umenikomboa e bwana mungu wa kweli and so the jewish women every evening as they were taking their kids to bed they would they would pray this prayer kwa hivyo wamama wa yahudi kile jioni wanapoenda kuwaraza watoto wao wageoba hili obi and because they were going into the night of darkness they would be asleep they wouldn't know what would be happening in the night they had the confidence to face darkness na kwa sababu walikuwa wanaingia katika giza watarana hatujua nini kitatendeka walipata jasiri wa kukubana na ile giza I want to ask us this morning Nataka kuulizeni are you sure that you can face the darkness that is coming in life Je una uhakika kwamba utaweza kukubana na giza inayokuja maishani Are you sure today if you are out of this life you are meeting the father Je una uhakika ukitoka katika maisha haya utakutana na baba confidence even to face the dark moments it might not be darkness per se but the dark moments that will come in our lives from time to time because 
This is the reality of life. Je, una ujasiri wa kukubana na hali ngumu ambazo zitakuja maishani mara kwa mara kwa sababu huu ndio ukweli wa maisha? How many of us can pray that prayer that was prayed by the Jewish women? Je, that in your hands I commit my spirit. Je, ni wangapi wanaweza omba au become leader wa mama wa Yahudi kwamba katika mikono yako natia roho yako yangu? Three things that the cross given us. Mambo matatu Mungu ametutwalia. We have the truth that the scriptures have confirmed that indeed Jesus Christ died on the cross what was prophesied long ago tuna ukweli kwamba yale ambayo litabiriwa kwamba Yesu alikuja na kasurubiwa it has been proved by scriptures ni kwamba imedhihirishwa na maandiko number two, that we have forgiveness of sin and so salvation is available for us na baya pili ni kwamba tuna msamaha wa dhambi na kwamba uokofu ulitolewa and number 3 that we can face the darkness that life is going to bring our way from time to time. Na ya tatu ni kwamba tuna ujasiri wa kukubana na giza ambayo itakuja mara kwa mara. As I bring this to a close. Napohitimisha hili, a story is told of a judge. Ah, uh, uh, hadithi inatolewa kwamba kulikuwa na hakimu. And this judge had a son. Na kwamba huyu hakimu alikuwa na mwana wa kiume. And this young man was like just like any other young man like your son or like uh, the other young man you know in the estate na huyu kijana alikuwa kijana tu kama yule wako ama mwanaonjua mtaani and they went about the businesses of young men na wakaenda katika shughuli za huyu kijana and as they were doing whatever they were doing na walipokuwa wanafanya walivyokuwa wakishughulika they stumbled upon some property of a rich man wakaenda na wakapata mahali kulikuwa na mali ya mtu tajiri and they destroyed that property na wakaharibu ile mali and so the rich man took this young there were three young men he took them to court kwa hivyo yule tajiri akachukua vijana watatu wakawapeleka pale kotini when he took them to court wakati aliopeleka pale kotini they they were the accused and the the, 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 the the accusations were read to them na kwamba wakasomewa mashtaka and they were found guilty na wakafanyia wakapatikana kuwa na hatia of vandalizing somebody's property kwa sababu waliharibu mali ya mtu the penalty was Five years in jail. Ah, uh, the wabu ilikuwa wapata miaka mitano gerezani. Or to pay a thousand dollars. Ama walipe dola elfu moja. This story is a wonderful story because this one of these young men who are accused and are in the dock, the court in which they were taken, the man that was sitting behind the desk was the father. Ni kwa ba mo. Moja wa vijana ambao walikuwa pale kwa ba ambaye alikuwa ameketi pale katika bench ambaye alikuwa ni hakimu alikuwa ni baba wa mmoja wa hawa kijana So the young man comes in knowing that we are going into dad's court Kwa hivyo huyu kijana akakuja akijua tunaingia pale katika ile koti He knows this is a walk over for us Na anajua hapa tu ni kupita tu And so the judge sits there Kwa hivyo hakimu akaketi pale looking at the three young men Akiangalia wale vijana watatu One among the three young men is a son mmoja wa wale vijana watatu and he goes ahead wake. to read the judgment na akaenda na akasoma hukumu he says young man akasema vijana you have been found guilty umepatikana na hatia and this is the sentence for what you have done na hii ndio hukumu ya kile kitu mmefanya this law finds you guilty and so we are sending you to jail for five years ni kwamba sheria imepata na hatia na tunawatuma gerezani kwa miaka mitano at that point the young man looks at the dad and says like kijana anaangalia babake anamwambia mimi in his heart he's like are you sure I, can't you see i'm here te kwa roho yake anajiweza uko na hakika baba hunioni ni mimi niko hapa he says oh you could pay a penalty of a thousand dollars and you walk free ana ama mtatoa dola 1000 na mtaenda huru of course the teenagers didn't have that kind of money oh vijana wa bale hawakuwa na ile pesa but they were seeing the reality of going to jail for five years lakini walikuwa naona uhalisi wa kwao kwenda gerezani miaka 5 and he said young man do you have anything to say akauliza vijana mna yapi ya kusema and at this point the son is not believing what the dad is doing he thought it was a game na yuki jana haamini babake ananena vile alifikiria ni mchezo cannot do this he's, he's thinking so what are you going to tell mom in the evening what, what are you going to tell my brothers utaenda kuambia ndugu zangu na mamangu nini jioni you are sending me to jail i'm your son don't you? that is what he saying hivyo divi alikuwa anajiambia kwa moyo and the judge declares and that is the verdict na jaji akasema kweli hilo ndio hukumu and he rose up na akainuka the young men are now in tears nao vijana sasa wanalia they are crying all the tears that they had walikuwa wanalia machozi yote walikuwa remembering that they didn't have to do what they did because it was unlawful 
walikumbuka kwamba hakufaa kufanya jinsi walifanya anaikuwa kinyume na sheria lakini alikaa amecherewa sana the law had caught up with them kwa ba sheria anailiwashika so the judge stands kwa hivyo hakimu anasimama draped in his robes kwamba katika mavazi yake and he says that that is what the court decides na anasema hiyo ndio koti imeamua but he stands and walks behind his seat lakini anainuka anaenda nyuma ya kiti chake and removes his gown na anatoa ile vazi lake walks to the place where the accused was standing na akaenda mpaka mahali wa stakiwa alikuwa amesimama and he puts his hand around the sun na anaenda na mkubatia mtoto wake and he tells the sun na anamwambia sun kijana wangu when i am in this court wakati niko seated behind that desk nikiwa nimeketi nyuma ile dawati i am not dad i am judge mimi sio baba lakini mimi ni hakimu and the law demands that you go in na sheria inasema namna hiyo or you pay the penalty for what you did wende ndani ama utoe utoe ile penalty kwa sababu ya kitu here with you lakini niko hapa i'm your father mimi ni baba yako he went ahead and took off his checkbook akaenda na akatoa uh, kitabu chake cha hudi and for his son he wrote a thousand dollars fine na kwa mtoto wake akaandika dola 1000 and he paid to the court na akalipa pale kotini then he went back and sat na akarudi pale na akaketi on his seat kwa kiti chake friends uh, marafiki a day is coming wakati huu we have had all this time tumekuwa na wakati huu wote and we are thinking is a big joke na tunafikiria labda ni ni mtezo but the truth is it has happened on Lakini the cross of calvary ilifanyika calvary he gave his life for us akatoa uhai wake kwa ajili yetu he's coming as a judge na yeye anasimama he's kama hakimu yeye anatasimama kama and he's haki. coming to judge scripture says that judgment will begin in the house of god maandiko inasema kwamba hukumu itaanza katika nyumba ya mungu that time he will not be my savior wakati huo hatakuwa mwokozi my advocate hatakuwa wakili he will be the judge atakuwa hakimu and the law will take its course na kwa ba sheria itapata muondoko are you here wake. and it has not dawned on you that this is serious business and it concerns your life and where you're going to spend eternity sijui uko hapa na haijapambauka kwako kwamba hii inamaanisha na ujui mahali kwa wewe utaishi maisha yako the cross of jesus has availed salvation for us ni kwamba msalaba wa yesu umetutwalia wokovu even when we rejected him hata wakati even when we did things that did not please him hata wakati tulitenda matendo hayakumfurahisha like those that were persecuting jesus and those that were crucifying him he forgave them he has forgiven us kama wale ambao walikuwa watesi wake na wakamsurubisha baada wasamehe you didn't stand up for salvation of what you believe is true ni kwamba alisimama kwamba wokofu ambao unaamini even when you have not stood up for salvation hata wakati hujasimama kwa sababu ya wokovu he has forgiven you yeye amekwisha kusa mehe receive the forgiveness pokea msamaha receive the forgiveness of sin pokea msamaha wa dhambi when you have no confidence to face the trying moments in life wakati hauna ujasiri wa kukubana na mambo maishani he has gone before us ni kwamba yeye ametutangulia is able to hold your hand kwamba yeye ana uwezo wa kushika mkono i do not know wako. what your situation is sijui hali yako iko vipi and i invite all of us to rise at this moment na nawaalika sisi wote tukaiuka you could be here and you're saying my dark moments you do not understand wewe unasema hali yangu ngumu hauielewi you, you're saying today as i walked out of that house unasema leo nilipokuwa natoka ile nyumba in my head i was saying this is the last time i'm walking out of that family kwa mawazo nilikuwa nasema hii ndio wakati wangu wa mwisho i am not going kata. back there kwa kwa sababu sitarudi kwa ile nyumba tena it is enough kwa sababu yatosha i cannot continue kwa sababu siwezi endelea tena you're just about to give up because of that dark moment that is in your life uko karibu kupoteza tumaini kwa sababu you could be here as a young person and you're saying it is this is the last moment they are seeing me labda unasema wewe ni kijana hapa unasema huyo wakati wa mwisho wananiona as We pray and I invite the ministry team to come forward. Tunapoenda kuomba na nawaita watu wa kikundi cha huduma waje hapa mbele. Please before you go and do whatever you have purpose to do. Tafadhali kama ra uende utekeleze abacho umenuia. There's somebody who is willing to pray with you. Kuna mtu yuko tayari kuomba na wewe. For that thing that you're saying if the, if somebody does not come through for me I am going to do something. Kwa ile kitu abacho unasema iwapo hakuna mtu atajongelea kwangu so nitafanya hicho. I invite you to come. Kwa hivyo nakualika jo. I invite you to come. There's salvation available for you. Kwamba kuna kwa kuna wokovu ambao unapatikana kwa. Jesus has gone before us and so we are able to face the dark moments of our life. Kwa Yesu alitutangulia kwa hivyo tunaweza kubana na hali 
ngumu maishani.